the WebEx Developer Evangelism Team. For today's webinar, we will be using the Slido Embedded App for Q&A. Look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen. You can also participate by on your mobile device by scanning the QR code on the screen now. Joining us for today's webinar is the Developer Platform Web Team, who will walk us through the process of integrating WebEx meetings into your apps using the new WebEx Web V3 SDK. But before we jump into all that, Phil will share some exciting things to look out for. Take it away, Phil. Okay, thank you, Carmen, and thank you everybody for joining the webinar. Um, I'm not gonna take too much of your time, but uh, just wanna quickly highlight some of the latest news for WebEx developers, um, and then we'll, we'll start the main presentation on the WebEx SDKs. Um, but uh, you can read these, you know, these next four items on developer.webex.com slash blogs. Uh, we have a lot of really good content on there, but. You know, here's some of the new stuff we're, and actually uh, something you can look out for soon. Um, you know, the first one, uh, the leader of uh, the WebEx Developer Evangelism Team, Adam Weeks, uh, his newest content center blog is on uh, customizing navigation widgets. Uh, you can learn how to easily add tabs to the main menu, personalize with momentum icons, uh, configure the, uh, the layout.json file uh, for an optimized agent desktop experience. Um, so that's really good stuff. That's really uh, where we've kind of kicked off our, our content uh, around is like around the agent desktop. Um, so this really brings a lot of those things together. Um, so be sure to check that one out. Uh, next. Uh, so I have an upcoming blog that's going to be probably published later this week. Um, and it's going to be to get acclimated with the authorization process for WebEx Contact Center APIs. Um, so I try to uh, go over, you know, configuring contact center integrations, uh, selecting the proper scopes and, you know, what these scopes actually mean, um, you know, leveraging the OAuth 2 grant flow so you can, you know, secure API transactions are in top of mind there. Uh, you manage your tokens effectively, you know, for the expiration dates, which are a little different than uh, what we have for on the WebEx suite uh, APIs. Um, so be on the lookout for that. That should be published here with the next day or two. Uh, next, um, so if you've already mastered, you know, building WebEx integrations, you know, already uh, take on the challenge of hosting your uh, your integration or your bot somewhere. Uh, we have a really great uh, how-to blog from our community technical manager Eugene Morozov. Um, so you know, he kind of takes you into the realm of AWS. Uh, get you on the guide of deploying, you know, I guess a, a somewhat complex application using Elastic Beanstalk and Code Pipeline. Um, but it's really great. You can kind of see what, you know, what it actually takes to get it hosted permanently on, you know, AWS. Um, and, you know, ultimately, you know, that's where a lot of the deployments are going. Um, so it's great to just have a step-by-step -step guide. And that's what he did there. Um, and then the, the fourth one here, uh, you know, we recently published a blog from uh, engineering product manager, uh, Janelle Allen. Um, and she kind of uh, goes, to, uh, kind of uh, takes us through how WebEx now leverages Skim 2.0, and that's to streamline user identity management. Um, she shows us how this, you know, elevates the efficiency, automates provisioning tasks, um, and this kind of fosters more innovative solutions around those things. Um, so it's really great to be up on that standard now. Uh, so we're really happy to announce that. So uh, for more details, you know, be sure to check those out over at developer.webex.com slash blogs. But uh, finally, you know, for the news section here, um, myself and the rest of the uh, WebEx developer evangelism team is going to be joining the greater WebEx team over at Enterprise Connect in Orlando. Uh, so uh, if you're already attending, you know, come over and, and find us there. Uh, you know, we're going to be uh, over at the, at the WebEx exhibit, which is usually one of the biggest ones there. Um, but we're going to have uh, some demos. We're going you know, to be talking to a lot of partners when we're over there. So we're pretty excited. But uh, if you're still thinking of going, um, you can save 700 bucks on the, on the conference pass, or you can just get the, the free Expo Plus pass. Um, and then you can just use uh, the code WebEx when you go to register for that. Um, so, uh, you know, that's what we have kind of going on with the news now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick it over to uh, the team for uh, our main presentation. Uh, so take it away, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, everyone. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. 
So we are the developer platform web team presenting you about how to, how you can uh, upgrade your app to the WebEx meeting SDK v3 and more stuff around it. Uh, can we have the next slide? So about today's agenda, we will start off with what a WebEx SDK is, and then we'll talk uh, more about where you can use the WebEx SDKs. And then we'll move along to the features that the web, web SDK offers already on the meeting site. Then we'll talk about SDK v3, which is the newest, which is where we are going to show a demo today, a live coding session. And after the live coding session, we are going to straight ahead uh, go into the improved meeting experience. We'll, uh, we'll give you some info about what's exciting and what's new on the improved meeting experience. We'll have some closing notes and then we'll move along to Q&A. So this is our agenda for today. Uh, can we have the next slide? Yeah, uh, let's get started. What is a WebEx SDK? That's where we got to start. When I say Web uh, SDK, it's a software development kit as, as it's expanded and it, it's going to provide functions or methods around the uh, HTTP endpoints of the web edge services as API wrappers. And these API wrappers uh, are simple and flexible to use. Uh, you just give your uh, input in a format. We will take care of converting it from the uh, format that's given, translate it into what the endpoint needs, and then we'll give you back the responses. So this is what a web edge SDK does with respect to the uh, WebEx services, it's not just limited to WebEx meetings. Uh, it's, uh, we have the WebEx calling SDKs, uh, embedded apps SDKs, and not just that, it's not just on the web platform, which are, we are showcasing today. We also have iOS and Android SDKs, which can give you a great meeting experience. Now, when I say the SDK, where can it be so useful in your application? That's what we are gonna so, uh, see next. Uh, Phil, can we have the next slide? So uh, when we say SDK, let's get into a small imagination where uh, you have a healthcare service, say you run a hospital, which also has an application where the doctors and patients connect. Uh, being that said, what if we could uh, bring the consultation online and make it instant, almost that the uh, customer, the patients are not going to know about it. That's where the WebEx SDK comes into picture. And uh, it is very instant. You, your customers, your, the patients need not leave your application, get into WebEx and get the meeting experience. All the meeting experience that we have on WebEx, all the sophisticated stuff is going to come into your app in one touch. That's, that's where the WebEx SDK comes into picture. Uh, to talk more about the other use cases, we have uh, education, let's say uh, lecturers and students want to connect instant and they have to get their doubts cleared. Or if there is a financial service where you're a banker and your customer is looking to fill out some documentation, they need not come over to the bank and do that. They can instantly join a call with the banker and then get it resolved. Uh, when we say retail or customer support, your customers can quickly get in touch with the customer support executive just on one click because the web SDK uh, are going to play a role. And all these can happen without them leaving your application. So yeah, uh, that's that's where uh, web SDK is coming to picture. Uh, Phil, uh, can we have the next slide? And can we also push the slide over the work club? Okay, let me get that started here. So, yeah. you know, in this first one here, um, you know, we're just asking, you know, what industry is your field of expertise? Yes. And that could be a free form answer, whatever, from your perspective, your industry is. Hey, Phil, I don't think the embedded app opened up. Can you try to open it up again? Sure. <clears throat> Did it open up? Yes, it's loading. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Yep, sure thing. Okay. 
Starting to roll in now. Manufacturing transportation. Yeah. Legal. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Wide variety already. Yeah. <laughs> Product development. And looking for more answers here. Yep, we've got finance. Filtering. Back end mobile technology. Mobile technology. Yeah. Technology is catching up. Yeah, everybody kind of representing a, a different industry, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> They're all the same size. Yeah. <laughs> and the good thing is WebEx has use cases in almost all of these industries. So, yeah, it's it's good to know healthcare. healthcare. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. we knew healthcare was going to show up eventually, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll kick it back over yeah. to the slides here. That's great. Yeah, so being that said and the use cases discussed, I think we do have uh, use cases for legal uh, where we can mimic a courtroom, uh, where uh, an advocate and the uh, consultant, they can have calls instantly almost with, with just one tap. So I, I think we have a lot of uh, use cases in each of these industries. Uh, being that said, let me move to what the WebEx uh, web meetings SDK is offering the existing features that we have with the uh, meetings SDK. So uh, any SDK that should offer uh, the feature, that's what uh, we offer with respect to the basic ones, uh, creating a meeting and joining the meeting with audio and video. Uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, uh, uh, we do have screen share controls and then uh, advanced meeting controls like recording your meeting or locking your meeting uh, and uh, a, a bunch of advanced uh, meeting controls. And then uh, we also have uh, device controls where uh, when you're uh, also having a WebEx device, uh, say uh, be a WebEx desk row or a DHIT, you can pair to your WebEx device from our SDKs today and join the meetings through the web uh, devices instead of using a web app. We have uh, also uh, real-time transcriptions, moderator controls where uh, they can mute a participant, moderators can mute a participant, make someone the host, uh, they can remove someone from a meeting, such controls are available. We also support uh, FedRAMP environment for the uh, governments, and then we have uh, background noise reduction, uh, full HD support where you can change your video resolution based on uh, your internet availability. And then we also support TLS 443 where uh, you can uh, really have all these meetings happening through a secure endpoint. Uh, plus, we also, like already mentioned, we also do offer these SDKs not just on the web, but also on iOS and the Android platforms. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Yeah, so now here, uh, the uh, my friend Shreyas is going to talk more about uh, what the WebEx SDK v3 is, what are all the features that it offers, and how you can get to it very quickly. Over to you, Shreyas. Thank you, Keswa. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to talk about the new features that we have in the v3 SDK, what all we have changed, and what all we are offering. So as for what's changed, we have moved from tracks to streams and for the features we have effects and transcriptions for the effects i'm going to talk about the two important uh, effects that we are uh, offering the virtual background and the background noise reduction can we have the next slide okay so for what's changed uh, we have now moved from tracks to streams uh, the, uh, from tracks to streams, uh, streams are generally uh, more efficient and they are easy to integrate. Uh, the major advantage of using streams is that it allows us to manage our video and audio more efficiently. Uh, this movement has also allowed us to add various effects. Now we can just create effects and add it to our streams and the effects will be applied. Uh, now, as you can see, previously it was a bit more tedious to first get the device 
then the track, and then join the meeting using these information. But now, all you can, you, all you have to do is create your respective streams and just join the meeting. Next slide, please. So, since now we have streams, we can easily add the effects. The first effects uh, I'm going to talk about is the virtual background. Uh, we have all been in the situation where our background is not ideal and you want to hop on a call. Well, now you can use our virtual background to change your background to a bit more professional setting. But virtual background only fixes the background and not the noise that's coming. So the other effect that we are offering is the background noise reduction. With BNR, you can make sure that it's just your voice that is reaching the other side. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, another exciting feature that we have in V3 SDK is the ability to enable transcription. Now, with just one click, you can start receiving accurate transcripts for all your meetings. We have the option to set the spoken language. Uh, once the language is set, whenever we speak, it detects it and it sends the transcript to all the users. Uh, another option that is available is the ability to set the language in which you want to receive transcripts. So the speaker might be speaking in Hindi, but you will start receiving the transcripts in your set language. Now let's get straight into the most awaited part of the webinar, the demo. Next slide, please. So for the demo, we are going to first show how easy it is to just plug in our SDK into any existing web application and just start your meeting within minutes. Uh, can we have the demo? Uh, the other, uh, so, and, and we're going to end with adding some of the, the new effects that we have introduced, uh, the virtual background and the background noise reduction. So for the demo, we have taken uh, the use, the, the case of our old friend, John Doe. Um, are you having uh, trouble sharing the screen there? No, no, it's, it's, it's up and running. Okay. Okay. So for the demo, we have taken the example, uh, the use case for, of our old friend, John Doe. John Doe is about 72 years old. He has never been a tech savvy and he has recently brought a new smart TV. He was really excited to watch his favorite Netflix series, but for some reason, it's just not starting up. So he went on the he went on the web application where he bought um, his TV and he thought of getting some support. He click on the support option. Um, okay, let's let's try installation and he wants to actually have a one on one meet with the user with, with the customer support. As you can see, we we have set it up a basic structure for the demo. Uh, now I'm going to pass it to Rajesh, who will work his magic and make all of this work. Over to you, Rajesh. Thanks, Aras. Hey, everyone. Um, as as you can see, we have already set up the demo due to the time constraints. We have created the project wider plate and left the placeholders for CK code. Uh, so that we can focus more on the SDK instead of the HTML, CSS, and other basic Java, Java scripts. <clears throat> so as you can see, we have imported and placed all the required variables and functions in place. And now let's see the SDK now action. To work through the SDK, we have more than one approach. Uh, we can either use the node module through NPM or YARN, or we can directly use the CDN. In our demo, we'll be going with the CDN approach. So let's go ahead and use the CDN link. All right. Now that we have the SDK available within the project, we can start using the SDK APIs. In order to facilitate the meeting, <clears throat> join meeting, we'll be going through seven simple steps. Step one will be creating a guest access token by adding an endpoint about which a developer can find more about uh, details on the developer portal. I'd like to add a note here um, about the guest access token creation. Earlier, we had guest issuer to create a guest access token, uh -huh. but now this has been moved to be created through a service apps. 
about which more details can be found in developer portal. The difference between uh, the uh, generating the guest access token through the guest issuer and the service apps are similar. Uh, in both cases, all you have to do is hit an endpoint and you'll get the guest access token. We are using a guest access token as in our use case, we don't want the customers to know about the platform behind the scene or go through any prerequisite to join the meeting. Now step two will be initializing the WebEx with the guest access token and registering the device. Now in step three, we will create a meeting object using the information obtained by creating or scheduling the meeting through developer portal. So let's create the meeting through developer portal and note down the response. So we have already created the uh, meeting scheduled uh, from here. So in our case, we are simply making the API call from developer portal. The same can be done by making a post request to the uh, slash meetings API from the project code base. Once the meeting object is created, so once the meeting object is created in step four, we will <clears throat> we'll need to set up the media listener um, so that uh, when other participants of the meeting join, their audio and video can be listened and so on. In step five, we'll get the local media streams. And then in step six, we will verify the meeting password. Now this step is only required when a participant joins as a guest or while creating the meeting, required pa password is enabled. Now that we have everything in place, the final step will be to join the meeting with the local media stream. All right, let's go and implement these steps and see them in action. So step one is to get the guest access token. Let's, let's do that. So once we have, as you can see here, all we have to do is uh, make a uh, HTTP request and we have the guest access token. Once that we have the guest access token, we can initialize the WebEx and register the device. So let's go ahead and do that. So here you can see we are passing the guest access uh, token uh, as a credential while initializing the WebEx, and then we are registering the device. All right, now that we have registered the device and initialized the WebEx, we can go ahead and create the meeting object using the same information that we obtained uh, when we created the meeting on the developer portal. Here you can see that while creating the meeting, we are using the SIP address from the same information of obtained um, and noted down. This is the response uh, that we get when we create the meeting. So in our case, we are using the SIP address. Uh, there are other information also uh, that can be utilized to create the meeting object. So now that we have created the meeting, in the next step, we can set up the media listener. So let's go ahead and do that. Now here you can see that we are listening to two types of event per media. One is the media ready and another one is the media stop. The media ready event we are listening so that when the other participants or the remote participants starts to share their media, we can receive and show them uh, in the application. So as you can see that we are assigning uh, the same stream to the video element and audio element. And uh, while stopping the media, Yeah, when, when we receive the stop media event, we are removing the same stream attached to the video elements and audio elements. All right, now that we have set up the media listener, we can go ahead and create the local media streams. So here you can see, uh, in order to create the media streams, for example, micro, uh, microphone streams and camera streams in our case, we don't need to do anything uh, different. We already have pre-built methods. So all we have to do is pass a couple of uh, uh, parameters to these uh, methods, and these are completely optionals. 
uh, params. In order to create the camera streams, you can see that we are passing width and height. Uh, that th those information are also optional. Uh, these uh, width and height represents the resolution of the streams. So um, using these uh, methods, we get the local media streams. Once that we have the local media stream, we can go ahead and verify the password. Let's do that. Now that you can see, in order to verify the password, we are again uh, getting the password information from the same response that we obtained uh, when we created the meeting. And using the same information, all we have to do is just call this verify password and uh, password gets verified if it is correct. Now that all the steps are done, we all we have to do is go ahead and join the meeting with the media stream. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that we, we have the local media stream and we are we are joining with the um, uh, with the same uh, stream, uh, these are only uh, basic uh, seven steps which are pretty simple to do. This is all the required steps to join the meeting. Now that we are done uh, with all these steps, let's go and see them in action now. So as you can see that we are we, as as we have clicked the join, um, all those seven steps are running, uh, getting that uh, guest access token, then initializing and registering the device, and then um, yeah, creating a meeting object, getting the streams, verifying the password, and finally joining the meeting. So as you can see that it was that simple. All right. Um, uh, as you can, <clears throat> as Shres talked about uh, the the virtual background effect and uh, um, BNR, which is nothing but uh, background noise removal. So let's see and uh, yeah, Let, let's go ahead and implement that and let's see them in action as well. So in, in order to uh, apply the virtual background effect. All you have to do is create the effect. Uh, we have a couple of options, <clears throat> uh, arguments here you have to provide. First one is the mode, another one is, is the background image, or we can also provide the background video URL. Uh, yeah. The modes are, uh, we have three types of mode, blur, image, and video. In case of image and video, we have to provide the image and video in case of blur, all we have to do is provide the mode and it, it works out of the box. Once we have created the background effect, all we have to do is add that effect to the stream and enable the effect. Similarly, for background uh, noise removal, here also we can simply create the effect and add the same effect to the stream and enable the effect. In order to disable all these specs, all you need to do is call the disable on those effects. As you can see, these are pretty simple to do. Let's go ahead and see them in action. Now again, while joining the meeting, we are going through the, all those seven steps. Once we are ready with the meeting, once we have joined the meeting, now we can enable the virtual background. Let's do that. As you can see, the uh, John Doe's background screen is changed now. So yeah, uh, that was about the uh, effects. Now, uh, Keshwa will talk more about so what do you think, Shwa? Yeah. Can we have the slides up? Yeah. 
we had a poll up here. Um, so, you know, before we jump back into it, uh, just to put in what is your developer skill level? We'll be interested to hear how uh, uh, how everybody uh, had a, a lot of experience or maybe not a lot of experience with development. Looks like most of them are or, seasoned. Or not a developer <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite all right. Um, <laughs> even better when we have the non-developers come, you know, to learn more about these things. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's good to know we have a lot of developers today in the meeting, in the webinar. Yep. Still got some results coming in there. All right. A lot of comfortable coders here and some same amount of seasoned pros. It's great. All right, let's jump back over the slides here. Thank yeah. you, everybody. So, on the next one here. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rajesh and Shreyas. That was a great demo, by the way. And thanks, Phil, for uh, going through the slider results. So, yeah, uh, coming back. What else we are talking about today? So we'll talk about the improved meetings experience as we mentioned earlier during the agenda. So uh, again, what is improved meeting experience? What has improved? So that's what we are gonna talk about. Uh, so earlier, uh, there are two kinds here, the classic old meetings and the improved meetings. We'll talk what has changed between the old one and the new one. Before that, what an improved meeting experience is. So, uh, when we say improved meeting experience uh, on the web edge services, it's the combined experience of the uh, classic meetings where you can schedule a meeting or you can join a, a personal meeting room and uh, taking that experience into the scheduled space meetings where in a space you can schedule a meeting and or you can join the meeting uh, on a button click. So uh, we have combined these experiences with the uh, service level and then we offer a new improved experience and when I say improved it's not just for us it's also for you users where uh, there are a lot of changes on the security aspects on the feature aspects as well so in the classic meeting experience uh, for instance uh, every meeting that gets created is directly tied to the creator of the space so whenever we say features uh, on a meeting that's directly tied to the space creator who we call as a meeting sponsor. So uh, everything is pointed towards the uh, space creator. If there is a feature that the space creator's license doesn't have, the meeting wouldn't have. That used to be the scenario earlier. On the improved meetings, we are changing that. So the meeting sponsor concept is going away. And every uh, feature is going to appear based on the host of the meeting. So if the host's license is uh, enabled with a particular feature, that feature is going to be available on the meeting, no matter who the host is. And then, so earlier in the classic meetings, uh, during uh, in a space meeting, if there is an unlicensed user, they'll be able to still create a meeting on behalf of the space creator on the new experience that's going away. It's one of the security reasons and uh, every user who wants to join a meeting or who wants to create a meeting, they definitely need a web edge license. And what if you are a guest user? So if you are a guest user, the, like Rajesh mentioned already, the old guest issuer is going away. And then uh, we have the service apps where you can create mission accounts and these mission accounts can schedule a meeting on behalf of you in whichever space you're looking for and also create guest user tokens for you. So uh, can we have the next slide? Please? So being that said, uh, what are the features that the improved meetings experience offers that the classic experience, classic meetings doesn't have? So I've tried to list down some of the features here. There are a full set of other features and more coming in the days. Uh, however, some of the highlights are uh, you can uh, mute on entry. So you're uh, hosting a webinar like this or a meeting where there are going to be a lot of users, uh, you can make them mute on entry. So whenever they enter the meeting, irrespective of their preference, they'll be muted and they can unmute whenever uh, they have to actually talk about it. 
talk anything in the meeting. And then the uh, WebEdge Assistant, of course. So uh, on WebEdge Assistant, the new meetings experience, improved experience has WebEdge Assistant's feature. So you can call out WebEdge anytime during the meeting. Hey, WebEdge, do this for me and it will do it for you, provided you have the skill configured. And then the closed captions, like we already discussed, the SDK v3 also offers the closed caption support right now. And on the WebEdge app, these closed captions are available for the improved meeting experience where you can set your spoken language and you can speak in your native language, while the other end, the receiver, can receive the caption in the their preferred language, uh, which is the caption language. So WebEdge not only uh, does a live caption, it also translates it live for you and uh, sends it over to the uh, other end of the meeting. So, and then the support of reactions. So uh, if you are in a meeting where you don't want to talk, but you definitely have to share your opinion about something that's going on in the meeting, you can always use, you know, if you are sad about some, a big news that came through in the meeting, or if you are so happy that you are uh, getting an appraisal review sooner, something like that, anything be, you can always react to a meeting. And of course, uh, instead of uh, physically saying, hey, I want to tell something, you can raise your hand and wait for your cue while the host of the meeting can uh, allow you to talk. So these are some of the highlighted features on the improved meeting experience and more to come. So if you are uh, a user or if your org is it's still in the old classic meeting experience, I would definitely urge you and encourage you to move to the new uh, improved meeting experience. And it's going to come up with a lot of exciting features in the future. So yeah, uh, can we go to the next slide? So now, now that we had the demo and we also did talk about uh, the improved meeting experience and SDK V3, it is all a lot to take in, but please don't worry, we will simplify it for you as much as possible. And this is the first step to it. So if you want, if you are a new customer and you want to test out the SDK, any of the SDKs, uh, we do have documentations for everything. And uh, for, uh, the quickest way to start is go to developer portal, sign up, request for a sandbox, and once you have the sandbox uh, environment set up, you can use those credentials to create, schedule, add more test users, and then also join the meeting, test out all the features that we offer on our uh, web edge slide. Uh, can we go to the next slide? Talking about customers. So uh, I, I just wanted to highlight a couple of uh, use cases where uh, we have uh, our web edge SDK is being used. One is the expert on demand where our WebEdge Android SDKs are plugged into uh, the cameras. If you see the images, we have a frontline worker who has a uh, camera along with his uh, headphone and then uh, there is a surgeon who is also having it. So they can uh, still do these surgeries uh, with a consultation of an expert online somewhere and they can uh, do whatever they want. So on this, uh, they have we have our uh, WebEdge Android SDK being used, it is one of the use cases. So what I'm trying to say here is not only just on your web application or iOS or Android application, it can also extend to your smart devices. You can use our SDKs on the smart devices to build your use case around it. And then next is uh, the other uh, customer, the Instant Connect that we wanted to highlight. The use case here is uh, for a doctor and patient to consult online. And this consultation just goes in uh, a, a blink of an eye. You just click on a link and you join the meeting, you have your consultation with your doctor. So these are some of the use cases that we wanted to highlight today. Uh, can we have the next slide? Yeah, so we are almost at the closing point of the webinar where uh, we'll, th these are some of the webinars that we have lined up and we are working on. We, are, we will be bringing this to you through the developer portal webinar. So please do stay tuned and definitely watch over for the uh, webinars that come through our team and do register it. Uh, yeah, can we have the next slide? Now, talking about how you can get in touch with us, that is where, where all these support channels come into picture. First, we have the ask spaces where 
uh, you can always join the space using the EURL and post your question there. We'll be there to assist you and help you out with your issues or we can also talk about a new feature that you're requesting for. And then uh, the developer support channels where we do have a developer support where you can go and raise a ticket. Our developer support team will ensure that comes to us, uh, the engineers, we get it resolved and you have your issues solved. You can always also go to developer community, post your question. There are going to be other customers who can help you or our own uh, developer support team that can instantly resolve your issue. And then you can uh, definitely come to our GitHub repository issues page, post any issue that you have with the SDK or have a question on the SDK or if there is a feature request that you need on the SDK, do share, let us know through uh, GitHub repository issues. We are always on the lookout for that. And then finally, the uh, email that we have for the developer support, please, uh, you can use the uh, email where our uh, executives are going to be looking out for it. Uh, and they'll bring it to our attention. And then finally, when we say, how are we gonna uh, communicate, there is something, a new feature is coming up on the SDK. That's where the all new WebH developer beta program comes into picture. So whenever we have a new SDK that's gonna be rolled out, we are gonna have a beta opportunity on the WebH developers beta platform. You can sign up for it and you will receive emails uh, on the updates. And whenever you find something interesting, please do sign up for it, test it out, and leave us your feedback. Your feedbacks will always be heard. Coming to the feature requests, uh, if at all there are any features that you want uh, on WebEdge, please do head out to Cisco Collab Aha and then uh, post out your request. And if it gets enough momentum, who knows, your feature will be built. And then the demo app repository. So whatever we showed today on the demo, it's a simple HTML CSS JavaScript app that's integrated with our SDK and you can join the meeting. So please head over to the link and you can uh, go through the demo codes. You can use them to build your application. We also do have our kitchen sink app on our repository, which you can use to bring in all the other features that we spoke about uh, during the SDK introduction. Uh, Phil, can we uh, open the link to the repo? Um, I can't do it from here. I'm I'm actually just sharing a PowerPoint. I don't know if okay. somebody there can just okay. open it up and, and take the share. That, 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 should, that should be all right. So uh, please do head over to the link. Uh, we will be posting this link underneath the description of the recording in the uh, webinar space of the developer portal. There you have links to uh, everything that we spoke about today, the demo that we showed, uh, the support articles that we posted, uh, that's from the developer platforms about the USM migration, about migrating to SDK uh, v3, and also about streams and effects, how you can create your own streams and effects using the v3 SDK. So it has pretty much every helpful link that you we saw today, and all these uh, links to the support channels as well. So please do leverage that link and whenever you want to get in touch with us, we are always here on the lookout. Thank you. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I know I had one more poll that I created here. Let's just to open this one up real quick. Um, let's see here. Um, just to get the, an idea for the audience and like, you know, have you heard about the, the WebEx SDKs before? Have you built on them already? Like, you know, how familiar are you with these SDKs, you know, either coming in or going out? Like, you know, you know, have you messed with them before? I know we, we have these kitchen sink uh, demos up over on our developer portal. A lot of times people can play around with those to see what the methods are and things like that. Um, but, uh, I don't know if we have any experts here besides our <laughs> esteemed panelists. <laughs> yeah. All right. So hopefully we've empowered a lot of you to take that next step and to start, you know, crafting some really cool apps and integrations with the SDKs. Um, the, the great thing about those kitchen six apps is you can kind of learn a little bit, you know, uh, exactly what steps you need to take and what methods you need to use 
So you should be able to hit the ground running a lot of times when you've been playing around with that kitchen sink a little bit. All right. All right. That's great. And uh, you go Yeah, ahead. who knows on our upcoming webinars we are gonna see more experts because yeah. of this. Um so as far as uh questions that came in, I don't know if we had a few of them here. Let me take a look what we have. Um you know, what image and video formats does the virtual background support? Um, and that was, was answered in there. It looks like, you know, it's, you know, it just must be in JPEG, uh, PNG, or, or GIF format, um, uh, you know, in any format you can draw on HTML canvas. Um, and then the video files must be in MP4 or .mov format. Uh, we also put the link on where you can find more information, but... Um, I don't know if anybody has anything else to add to that. Um, seems like that was answered pretty well. No, I, I think it's, it's answered pretty well. And then uh, a question that doesn't look like it was answered yet is, you know, do we have APIs exposed for WebEx AI support, such as generating meeting summary or action items? So uh, right now with the uh, V3 SDK, no, but we are working on uh, bringing uh, supports for it. Uh, right now, the only uh, A feature that's offered on the uh, V3 SDK is the transcription. We, the closed captions where uh, you can have live captions, you can have translations to your native language. So that's the uh, only A feature that we offer right now on the SDK, but we are working on bringing all the other A features as well into the SDK. Yeah, I know that's a that's a popular request, so we're anxiously awaiting that to be added for sure. Um, and then it looks like the uh, only other question that came in is, you know, where can I find the recording to this webinar? Um, this one will be available very soon, like all of our other uh, past webinars. Uh, they are the recordings you can find right on the developer portal, developer.webex.com slash webinar. Um, so the, uh, the recordings are usually made available within a day or two. Um, so be uh, be sure to look out for that and you know view all the other ones. Um, so with that, it looks like we uh, went through all the questions and everything. Uh, we appreciate uh, everybody attending this session. Uh, thank you very much, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Take care. Thanks, everyone.